Hey you, I'm so glad you made it. Today, let's talk about resource guarding in both young puppies all the way up to adult dogs with steps and processes that have lasted a lifetime. So let's just jump into this video, right? Meow. Oh, and disclaimer, depending on your dog's severity with this, it may be safest and most effective for you to work with a dog trainer in person, but I still wanna share what worked for me. So as you may or may not know, we actually adopted Finnegan from a rescue. The rescue is I Dog Rescue. I love them, an awesome organization. And he was abandoned by his first family because he was too hyperactive, had some resourcing issues, had separation anxiety. And so when we brought Finn home, because I knew his background, that he had a lot taken away from him, his home, his stability, multiple families just uprooted him and passed him off and then uprooted him and passed him off. I really expected him to have some behavioral issues that we'd have to navigate. Resource guarding was one of them. And it was something that in his early, early months, he struggled with. When he got a toy he really liked, he'd do the little puppy snarl. And it caught me off guard at first because they're so cute and fluffy. And I'm like, oh, you're not supposed to be this way. But because I understood where he could have developed really strong sense of insecurity, I knew that it was on me to help him feel more confident that he is going to be in his forever home and I'm never going to give up on him. So the first thing we did was hand feed him. So from day one, we brought him home. We hand fed, not all, but majority of his meals, especially in the beginning. This dog is and was food motivated, which made that really effective because he learned that food came from me. So I wasn't a source of taking food away. I was the source of giving and providing. Next thing we did is when I would feed him by bowl, and we still do this to this date, is when it's dinner time, I actually have Finn and Ben wait when I put the bowl down. And with that, I would take their bowl of food. I put them in a sit or a down or even the place cue, which that's linked below how to teach that put their bowl down and I'd have them wait, which practiced impulse control. You see, there's a lot of different things that they're learning and practicing with this. So it's like multiple birds, one stone. And then when he was calm and not like whimpering or whining to get to the food, I'd release him, I'd say at ease, and he'd go get to eat his food. Again, what this taught him is that the food comes from me. I'm not only taking it away and you are going to wait in a calm state because I want them to enter the activity of eating their food or chewing on their chew, which I'm gonna talk about one of my favorite chews in a moment in a calm state, not in a hurried, anxious state. The next thing we did, which really, really helped, was working with him regularly. And what this did was build his confidence. Because again, a lot of times, not always, but a lot of times a dog will have resource guarding issues because they're insecure and they're not, and they're lacking confidence. They may not have a lot of practice with working on basic cues like sits and downs and working on leash and the place cue and the Finnegan touch. Yes, the touch cue, good boy, hi, say hi to the world, say hi. Oh, we're gonna sit right in front of the camera. And when dogs don't have that kind of structure and routine, then they lack purpose, they lack sense of self. And without that can come out undesired or unwanted behavior like resource guarding. So I gave him jobs to do, whether again, that was a brain game, I have a lot of examples linked down, below or during mealtime, we just work on basic cues and commands or I take him on walks and during walks, I would ask him for sits and downs and weights in different environments, which mentally tired him and built his confidence because he had more tools that, he, say hi, can you say hi? He had more tools that he knew how to do, which gave him more of a sense of worth, more self-esteem, and made him less worried that he was gonna lose things all the time because the poor kid lost so much so early, huh, Bubby? I'm sorry. And doing all of this with our dogs really helps build our bond with them. And what that does is it increases their trust in us and vice versa, and it helps give them a sense of their position in the household. I do not mean being alpha or anything like that by any means. I don't, I don't believe in that uh, theory, if you will. But how I look at my dogs is I am their advocate, I am their guardian, and they are looking for a strong and positive 
leader, just like a, a toddler or a child, right? Like they typically, I don't have a child, so you guys hold me true to this, but my understanding with human children is that if you don't give them structure and routine, they can tend to act out or rebel because they want that structure. They thrive in routine and dogs, in my experience, have been very similar to that in that if they understand their role, then they have more calm behavior and more confidence because they understand, okay, during mealtime, this is what I'm gonna do. During walks, this is what I'm gonna do. If left up to their own devices and not given any structure, dogs are potentially gonna choose the less wanted, less desirable behavior, and dogs do better, in my experience, when you give them structure and what do you want them to do? Mwah, huh, bubby? Also, while Finn's right here, yes, I see you, bubby, is do you like this bandana? I'm gonna tell you about this in just a little moment. It is linked below, but this is not just any bandana. Now, let's talk about this chew that I've been kind of sneaking into this. And this is a yak chew. Uh, you know, if you followed me for any length of time that I, look how excited they are, that my dogs love yak chews. The problem with most yak chews, and I'll, I'll tell you what these are in a moment, is that it's very, very difficult because they've become so popular in the pet space and now every brand wants to make them. It has become very difficult to find yak chew that is sourced responsibly. It's become very difficult to find yak chews that are priced reasonably, that are from an organization or a company that is pet first, not profit first. I know you boys are excited. Yes, Bentley's bandana we'll talk about in just a moment as well. And hard to find a yak chew that isn't highly, highly preserved or processed, which makes them, in my opinion, in my experience, less healthy. And so when I came across this company, I was like, hello, I need to try this. So I'm gonna open this for you. And then I'm gonna show you what I did with Finn when he was being protective or guarding over a chew like this and how I approached that and how, how I handled that situation. But I do wanna do a little unboxing here because many times I get people asking me, what are your favorite chews? Well, this is one of them. So first off, a yak chew, we're gonna open this. It's from Native Pet. The founders are these two guys that are lifelong best friends, dog obsessed, that wanted to create some really awesome pet products. So I also love the packaging. Not that that should be the determining factor of a product, but it helps. So this is what they look like. Um, I do have this linked in my shop page below and there are special codes. So this is what they look like when you open them. And this is what they, okay, Finnegan. So this is another thing actually that we worked on. Clearly we're struggling with it, but I'm okay with that because I wanna show you what I do. I want to teach my dogs that grabbing things out of my hands just because I have them is not okay. The way I do that is not by telling them no or fussing at them, but it's by holding something and not allowing them to get it just like that, taking it out away. I'm not saying anything to them and you see how that stopped. <laughs> Make, make a liar of me, but that's okay, we'll work through it. But you see how it stopped them from being as aggressively going at it. Um, so that's one thing that I do as well to kind of create that clear boundary of respect and mutual respect between my dogs and I and have really helped. So this is a yak chew. Uh, the size that my dogs use, this is a medium. I sometimes give them a large. The small size is too small for them and the extra large size is a little too big. So you see Finn kind of went for it. Um, he's a little more intense because I have my Labrador Bentley here but you see all I did was pull it away. But this is literally made with only four ingredients. Um, let's see if we can get a zoom in there. So you've got yak's milk, cow's milk, lime juice, and sea salt. So basically all this is, if you think about it, is like a hard, hardened cheese. Now it's not so hard that I'm worried about it chipping my dog's teeth. Every dog is different, but you can see it's a pretty hard chew that's long lasting and very, very, very low to no odor. I've never, I can't really, smell anything on it. So you see here, Finn's kind of getting in my face and he's kind of demanding the chew because he loves them so much. And I'm just pulling it, pull, removing it. Yes, good boy. And when he goes into a D-O-W-N without me asking, I just reward with Y-E-S. So as you can see, these are highly popular with dogs. Um, we've been using these and yak yeah, chews with my dogs since they were puppies. So a lot of people ask me if they're safe. For me and my dogs, when I'm choosing a chew, I always make sure it's something that adds some kind of health benefit, which is why I love these yak chews because they're very high in protein. So it's not just like giving them a cookie that's gonna add some extra sugars and carbs to their diet. It's gonna be adding some really rich protein, which is excellent for their joints 
muscles and honestly even their skin health i also want can you guys see their noses right there good boys yes good job i also want something that is not going to splinter which i've never had any issues at all with splintering in these they're not known to splinter i also want something that is going to be highly digestible so i don't worry about it um, getting stuck in their stomach or lodged in their esophagus or anything like that. Now, of course, I always supervise chew. Um, I always, with new chews, give it to my dogs for like 10 to 15 minutes at most at first, then I take it away. And I also make sure that, you know, when it gets to the very final little piece, the fun thing with these is when you get to the little piece, you can actually take that and put it in the microwave for like 30, 40 seconds and it pops up like a little kernel of popcorn. But I love the fact that these are limited ingredient. There's only four ingredients. Uh, it's adding to the health of my dogs. It gives them something fun to chew on that they enjoy. It adds mental mental health to their day and your enrichment, I should say, so that they're a little bit more calm. They clearly love the taste of it. And I love the fact that I'm supporting a super teeny tiny company. If you guys were to check a native pet on Instagram, you'll see it's a small team of really awesome humans that I've been fortunate enough at this point because I've been supporting them and love them so much and so integrated at this point now. Oh, you trying to get it? That I've been having, that I've had that I've had the honor and the opportunity to connect with them and just their passion for pets is so stinking incredible. But what I love to do is I love to, when I'm giving a chew to my dog, especially if they're prone to resource guarding is the same way that I give their food. Oop, okay, so I'm gonna come over here. Okay, Finnegan, can you place? Yes, good boy. Down, good boy. Bentley down, good boy. Is I have their chews and I'm waiting. I don't want them to lunge at me or to grab them or anything like that. Um, before I give it to them, I like to wait just a little bit. It just teaches a little bit of impulse control, puts a little structure, it works their mind. They love it, yes, good boy, yes. Give a little re reinforcement. The other cool thing about these chews is like I said before, they're sourced responsibly from free range yaks and animals from Nepal. And essentially it's just a hardened cheese. And it's a process they actually used, if I understand it correctly, for humans back in the day or even current days, that they can actually gnaw on this. And that's what I love about it too, is as the dog kind of gnaws on it, chews on it, or even sucks on it a little bit, it softens. And again, that's why I'm not worried about um, chipping their teeth or anything like that for my dogs, okay? I always give Bentley first because he's the senior, he's almost 12 and he's my first baby. And then Finnegan, yes, good boy. Now, here's a big thing. If you have a dog that is struggling with resource guarding, having them chew on chews or play with toys next to each other when you have multiple pets, not a good idea. Um, we've just overcome this for so long and Finn has learned that just because Bentley has a chew near him doesn't mean it's gonna be taken away. And this is what we can expect over time. And as you can see, the kiddos love it. Big thanks to Native Pet for sponsoring the video to support our mission to save all the damn dogs, which you can see up there. Now, let's say you have a dog that's resource guarding. Doing this and reaching your hand in here can actually be dangerous. So I don't necessarily recommend that right away. But when Finn was a puppy, if I tried to do this, I'd get the little uh, little snarl, which I know many I know many people watching this have dealt with that. And while I don't recommend doing this, I do believe, at least with my dogs, that I wanted to get to a point where I can reach in and grab, yes, thank you, grab the chew away in case they got their hands on something that was unsafe, uh, that I needed to grab from them, I need to be able to do that. So one of the things that I did to work on getting to this point without any issues, yes, good boy, is by taking a treat that's of a little bit higher value. Right now I'm using the uh, Real Dog Box Muscle Meat Treats. This is Chicken Heart. The dogs go crazy of these. These are linked to my shop page below under Real Dog Box and there are special codes, but I take something like this this and I toss it. Uh, yes, here we go. Bentley did it for us. And then he dropped his toy or his chew, his yak chew, and I took it away. And then in this situation, and Bentley's never had resource guarding, he's the most submissive giving boy ever. Then what I do is I give it back. Yes. And then I practice that again because what he's learning is to try with Finn, see if Bentley will get up and take it. Here we go, Finn. Yes, good boy. What Finn is learning is that when I approach him, even if he's chewing on a chew, yes, good boy, he gets something of great value, like a treat. And then I give him his chew back. We practice this multiple, multiple times every single day. Let's try it again. Finn again over here so they can see you. Come here. Boy. There you go. 
Okay, so in this scenario, I'm approaching my dog. In the beginning, I would be far away. Yes, now he's coming to me. Yes, good boy. If they do that, yes, good job. I pick up the toy, and then when he's calm and gives me a calm behavior, yes, good boy, I give him the chew back. And I just practice that time and time again because that repetitive practice, that repetitive activity taught him that, okay, every time mom or dad walks up to me, doesn't mean that they're just gonna take something else away. And what I'm doing is I'm trading. I'm trading something they really like for something else that they really like. So they start to learn over time that, okay, just because mom or dad takes something away doesn't mean that I'm not gonna have anything. It just means I'm gonna have something else that's slightly better. Oh, wait, maybe that means I should always give up whatever it is I have because I'm always gonna be rewarded by it, whether it just be treats, praise, toy, or play. Another thing we worked on was drop it. Finnegan. Drop it, yes, good boy. And when he dropped it, I picked it up and gave it back. Finn, drop it, yes, good boy. He dropped it, I picked it up and gave it back. Yes, good boy. We practiced that game so many times because what it did, again, was taught him just because mom or dad takes something away doesn't mean it's never going to come back. And this repetitive activity put him a little bit more in control because he was the one who actually dropped the toy. I picked it up and gave it back to him. I also taught him the T-O-U-C-H-Q, which I videos link below on how to do that. But it's essentially when you ask for it, the dog has to put their nose to your hand. And we practiced this separate from things that he was really possessive over. And I gave a lot of reward to reinforce the behavior so that he really wanted to come to me. And this would be a good way to get him away from the chew if I'm really struggling with him being possessive over it. But that what that looks like is Finnegan, touch. Yes, good boy. And then I reward big time. Ah, I'm really, yes, 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 yes. And then you have the toy or chew released from him. So this is a really good way to kind of get that back. And the touch cue is also a really good kind of recall tool as well. This. This right here is also proof of the power of doing all of these activities regularly starting early, early on, even if you're not having resource guarding issues, because this soft toy has been, and it's not the most durable, it came from Ikea, I think, a long time ago. This has been, you've probably seen this in my vlogs from years ago, has been in our family and in our household out and about for a very long time. It has not been shredded. One thing I learned from Finn, you know, he, he taught me this, is that when you come from a place of scarcity, there he goes playing with it, when you come from a place of scarcity, it's probably the same for humans as well, it can cause a little bit of intensity and insecurity, which is something I knew Finn struggled with. One thing I learned is if I did the game of trade regularly, where I would toss and give treats or a toy or something of higher value than whatever he had and was possessing over, then he learned that he didn't have to be so intense with his chews or his toys. When he was really young, Finn would chew on a chew as if it would be the last chew of his entire life. He would eat his food as if he had never eaten before. And again, I don't know if that came from him being without, which just breaks my heart to think about that. But what I also found is when he was young, he would try to shred soft toys, swallow everything and become really intense of it. And in the beginning, I just said, okay, then we won't have soft toys. But I think soft toys are fun. It's a different texture and I like them. So what I started trying when he got a little older was, letting him explore with the soft toy and not always just taking it away anytime he seemed like he was gonna shred it. And with that paired with trading and doing the trade-off where I gave something of more value, he, what happened was he learned to not be so intense with whatever he was playing with or chewing with that he loved. And this is an awesome example of that, that it has his dried slobber on it, which is kind of grody. Oh, look at him, he loves it. Okay, grabbing out of my hands. Yes, good boy, get it. Um, but this is something he just loves, he cuddles with, he plays with it. Um, and, and one of the viewers actually, one of you guys actually named him, he's been around so long, Marcus, this stuffed dog. And this was a good example of like, every time a dog gets a toy, if you just take it away, they can really learn to be overly aggressive or intense with it. And that was just like a little tidbit that really changed the way that I interacted with Finnegan. I also, I really worked hard at making Finn feel safe, both my dogs for that matter, when they're doing something that they may be a little insecure about, whether it's eating or playing with a toy. So what you can do is you can use baby gates or play pens or even a crate or use separate rooms that when you are giving your dog something that they really enjoy, and I always make sure I supervise if it's something they're chewing or eating or a toy, 
but giving them that safe space. So if you have multiple dogs or young children in your family, or maybe they're nervous around your husband or whatever it is, is every once in a while giving them that safe space in his crate where he could eat without worrying about my other dog eating his food so he wasn't golfing it down so much. What are you playing with your pot pod? Yeah. And that helped him just feel more trust that I was going to help take care of him and keep him and whatever he valued safe. Knowing also that I may giveth <laughs> and I may taketh. Yes, get it? Good boy, drop it. Yes, you wanna show them how we do this? Come over here, good boy. Oh. Okay, you wanna sit? Good boy, get it? Yes, and drop it. He loves these a lot. Yes, good boy. We just played this game a lot as a puppy and you can see it still struggles sometimes. Get it? Yes, good boy, yeah. Drop it. Yes, good boy. Okay, now go get it. Little things like that, little games like that have made a night and day difference. And I think one of the most valuable ways that I looked at this is that dogs are opportunist. They are going to seek opportunity to get a reward or a pleasure. And that reward or pleasure can be in form of attention, uh, getting something that they enjoy like a treat and if they aren't given structure and routine to understand what is and what is not allowable and if they aren't given confidence to know that they are always going to be fed and treats are not limited in terms of they're not going to go away forever I don't give endless amounts of treats because I don't want my dogs to be overweight then they are in my experience or at least with my dogs have just been a lot less intense and over time it just took a couple weeks of working with that when Finn was a puppy and now I can reach in and grab the treat. I'm not saying you go and do that because if a dog's having resource issues that could cause a, a bite or injury and I don't want that for you or your dog. I'm just saying that practicing this multiple times when he was really young and not allowing this yes good boy and not allowing that really helped us build a relationship and we're still working on a relationship we work on it every single day where he just doesn't have to worry he really wants this yes good boy how he disengaged attention but it, he doesn't he's not worrying oh i'm never going to get it it's just i want it right now but i need to practice self-control and impulse control so these bandanas are brand new i'm going to show you here they are linked below, so absolutely check them out. And look at this, guys, my actual handwriting. I just wanna show this off. These just came in the mail yesterday. So you guys know that I've been a big fan of the Paws bandanas because um, it's a small woman-owned business out of Bali. She hand makes these and proceeds go to rescue shelter and rescue dogs, which is incredible. So we collaborated and made some awesome, awesome designs together. And I will be sharing soon kind of the meaning behind these. We actually have more coming out, but I wanted to show you a little sneak peek that you can get your hands on um, right now and link below. Finnegan, can I see yours? And then here's the one that Finn was wearing. Look at this. And these are limited time. These are never going to be out again so you get them now or you know you lose out but this galaxy design I'm so obsessed with like this is so 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 cool and they have a variety of sizes and um, it's just such an awesome organization to be able to support a small business that's woman-owned that's supporting rescue dogs like it really just helps push towards our mission to save all the damn dogs. thing I also want to talk about which I forgot to mention before is mental stimulation enrichment and this means giving our dogs opportunity to work their mind with their brain because mental stimulation is far more tiring relaxing soothing calming to a dog than just physical exercise alone this can be in the form of brain games using something like the pup pod giving them chews so they actually use their natural chewing and gnawing tendency which is such a soothing and relaxing activity and natural activity for a dog or even working with cues like basic sits and downs these are ways that can help lower the intensity in our dog and help with all behavior issues i have tons of videos linked down below in fact if you want to learn about more brain games um click the video right here and we'll talk over that over that with you right now we'll jump over together or if you want to see some of of my favorite foods for dogs and treats click the video right here and don't forget to click that subscribe button i hope you have a beautiful day goodbye